Bonjour everyone from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. My name is Stéphane Couture and I work as a global product support specialist for Olympus NDT. In today's video, I want to present to you the benefits of updating your Omniscan Next 3 to MXU 5.2. Uh, this version brings a lot of advantages to weld inspection. So for today, I have a 12 millimeter weld plate, my trusty uh, phase array A10 probe, and a Mi wheel encoder. As you can see, I'm missing some hardware, so you will witness my uh, two-hand coordination abilities. Um, I have a pre-populated setup accounting for sensitivity and TCG calibration as well. So without further ado, let's get going. Before moving on with the scan, I want to make sure that I have the proper sensitivity level. In this case, I'm too hot at 105%. This can be quickly fixed by using the auto 80%. Once I'm happy with my reference, I will enable the reference gain. Uh, this does two things. Display the reference and minus 6 dB uh, curve on the A scan, but also fixes the gain at my level. So any gain that I add or remove after that is going to be scan gain, analysis gain, and so on and so forth. In this case, I want a 6 dB scanning gain. Once I'm all happy with that, I position my probe or scanner on the plate at the start, press play, and I can scan my weld just like that. Pause. Now, the C-scan doesn't look too, too good, and that's because I did a terrible job at positioning the gate. This can be fixed. I will start by moving the start of the gate to include some more of the root, then the width of the gate to include the volume of the weld, as well as the cap. And this looks a lot more to like what we're used to see. Um, this is not so optimal, however. So another benefit of the MXU 5.2 software is going into the gate menu during analysis. I will pin this on the side so that we can actually see what's going on at the C-scan. Uh, you can also change the gate geometry to sound path. I will adjust the start. Adjust the width. And with this, what you can do is do the analysis uh, zone by zone. So in this case, before the weld, or before the root signal, I should say. Then into the volume of the weld, there's this little guy right here. Uh, set data cursor, moving up and down. I can try peaking my signal. Um, a slight inclusion. So if I want to move ahead with the sizing of this indication, I can move on and use the auto 80% once again and do the minus 3, minus 3 dB or minus 6 dB uh, sizing method, depending on your procedure. OK. So. What you do to one side of the weld, you also want to do it to the other side of the weld. I'm just going to reset my gate to true depth. Set my start. Moving up. Width. And we're back to where we were. Now, moving on to the other side of the weld, you're going to move your entire scanner mirror or 180 degrees. So you need to account for two things. First of all, the skew of the probe, making sure that the data are coherent between one and the other, but also the uh, scanner or encoder orientation. If I just flip my scanner like so and start scanning, my value will actually decrease instead of increasing. That's not what we want. So. By pressing on scan, you have access to uh, the scanner polarity. 
can change it to inverse. And as I move in the right direction, this will actually increase on the C-scan as well. Um, another little feature or important feature under UT settings advanced, you'll see that you have digitizing frequency and net digitizing frequency available. Uh, the ASME 2019 code in the list of essential variables or in the table of essential variables list both digitizing frequency and net digitizing frequency. So no need to calculate it. It's already uh, given in the setup file or data file. Aside from phase array, we also have some benefits on the Tuft. So instead of going live with Tuft, I have a data file pre-populated. Nope. So I don't know how clear you can see, but uh, prior to the 5.2 software, only one dedicated UT channel was activated. Now both are. This means that you get the benefit from two dedicated UT channel with UT pulsers, uh, voltage, filters, um, all providing the best possible signal. So going back to single, just like with phase array, you can also uh, play around with the color palette. Zooming out. So what that gives you is the ability to uh, adjust the contrast as well as the brightness to optimize your uh, flaw detection and sizing. Just like with phase array again, you can play or play, adjust the gain, making sure that nothing is saturated. So I hope this was informative. Uh, the MXU 5.2 software is available for free download on the Olympus IMS website under the support page. Thank you and have a great day.